We're in Siberia. It's so cold here that freezing gusts of wind are burning your face. All that white snow seems to be blinding you. This place resembles Antarctica because of the permafrost. Recently, a group of scientists researched one of the local rivers. With the help of a drilling rig, they extracted several samples of frozen soil. The scientists were shocked to find living creatures inside the ice. Later in the laboratory, they realized that the creatures were microscopic multi-celled organisms known as deloid rotifers. These creatures looked like little worms. Scientists knew that these worms could live in frozen conditions for up to 10 years. But the age of the rotifers found in the ice was about 24,000 years. And after defrosting, they began to reproduce, as if they had been sleeping for several hours, not thousands of years. Further analysis showed that these organisms could stay frozen for hundreds of thousands of years. The rotifers might have lived during the time when people didn't invent the wheel yet. And this isn't their only superpower. Deloid rotifers are among the most radioactively resistant animals on Earth. They can survive in places where there's no oxygen and water. They can also stay alive in areas with high acidity and can live without food and water for a long time. By the way, these are not the only creatures that are known for living for thousands of years. Particular types of moss and some microorganisms are also almost immortal. Nematodes, also called roundworms, are some of the most adaptive varieties of worms in the world. Imagine the Eiffel Tower standing tall and proud. And now, let's make it 10 times higher and place it underground. Exactly at this depth, many thousands of feet under the surface, scientists discovered these creatures. There's no sunlight and almost no air in this place. And since it's much closer to Earth's core than the surface of our planet, the temperature here is higher than in the middle of the hottest desert. Millions of tons of soil above create insane pressure. But all this couldn't prevent life from developing here. When roundworms run out of air, food, or when the temperature becomes too high, they get into a unique state of stasis, or deep hibernation. In this mode, the worm's metabolism slows down, and almost all the processes in their bodies stop. The creatures can sleep for a very long time, and only wake up when the environment becomes more livable. By the way, you don't have to go so deep underground to find these creatures. Nematodes are found all over the world. They can live in hot springs, deserts, high in the mountains, among the harsh ices of Antarctica, or inside animals and humans. Our next invulnerable creatures are tardigrades, also known as water bears. These are microscopic eight-legged invertebrates, closely related to arthropods. It's impossible to see them with the unaided eye. But a conventional microscope will allow you to see tardigrades in detail. They look like minuscule bears. They're called water bears because they need a thin layer of water around their bodies at all times. It's necessary to prevent dehydration. Tardigrades have been found in all kinds of environments, from ocean depths to sand dunes. They're incredibly robust thanks to their unique organism structure. Yeah, they look soft, but their body is covered with a tough cuticle. This coating resembles the exoskeletons of grasshoppers, mantises, and many other insects. Water bears shed their old layer of the cuticle when they need to grow. Each of their eight legs has four to six claws, which helps them cling to any surface. The bears can survive at a temperature that's almost three times as cold as the temperature in the ice of Antarctica. Heat doesn't harm them either. They have been proved to survive at the temperature that makes water boil. Also, water bears are not afraid of radiation and high pressure. In the depths of the ocean, pressure can destroy alloys of the strongest metals. But these creatures can withstand pressures six times greater. But the coolest thing is that they can live in the vacuum of space. Our planet has a magnetic field. This is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. Tardigrades don't need this protection. They can go into near-Earth orbit and come back unharmed, all thanks to a protein protecting their DNA from ionizing radiation. Like other immortal organisms, water bears can fall into a state of cryptobiosis. Tardigrades pull their head and legs inside their bodies and fall asleep. If the surrounding conditions suggest freezing, drying out, or experiencing a lack of oxygen, they will remain in this barrel form until the situation improves. So those are microscopic organisms and microbes that can only be seen through a microscope. But how about something bigger? 
Meet ironclad beetles. They live in the southwestern U.S. and Mexico. These insects can not survive high temperatures, live without oxygen, or in conditions of increased radiation. But their shells are so tough that they can only be pierced with a drill or hammer. Their durable exoskeletons are made of a special substance, chitin. It can also be found in the armor of crabs or shrimp. And still, the chitin of the ironclad beetle is so durable that it allows this creature to withstand the impact of a car moving at high speed. In times of danger, they can hide their whiskers and strong legs in special recesses in their shell. Other animals can't bite through the armor, so they spit the beetle out and leave to look for lunch somewhere else. As soon as the danger disappears, the bug stretches out its legs again and goes about its business. Also, the armor saves the beetles from dehydration, which is very useful in hot areas of Mexico and the southwestern U.S. Inside the exoskeleton, they can store moisture. In other words, these bugs can absorb water whenever they find it and transport this liquid inside themselves. The next creatures are incredibly fragile, but they know how to survive in places where almost no other animals can live. We're going to the southeast of Romania, near the Black Sea. Here, on a desolate wide plain, you can notice a pit. This is a mine leading deep underground. The air on the surface of our planet usually contains around 20% oxygen, but in the mine, it's only 10%. Inside the cave, the air also has an increased content of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide. People can't breathe there without an oxygen tank. We can probably say that the water and air there are poisoned. Almost no animals would be able to survive here. Still, 48 species of living organisms have been found in this cave. 33 of them are newly discovered species. And they aren't the only microbes or bacteria that can't be seen without a microscope. Something bigger lives here. Strange white snails crawl over the walls of the mines. Transparent shrimp and a bunch of unknown kind of leeches swim in the water. White centipedes with huge whiskers and creepy white spiders run on the ground. And they all have been growing here for almost 5 million years. You might notice a water scorpion and another unidentified species of this animal. It doesn't look like its relatives living in hot sands or tropical forests. No living creature here looks ordinary at all. All animals are either white or transparent. They have no eyes, but are equipped with long paws and antennae whiskers that help them navigate in this dark space. The deeper you go into the cave, the less oxygen the air contains. But the number of living organisms is increasing. The air is filled with methane and carbon dioxide. All the inhabitants of this cave have never seen the light of the sun and have never gone out of the darkness. It seems impossible to survive in such conditions where plants don't produce oxygen. The answer to the question of their survival is hidden in a small lake. The surface of the water is covered with strange foam. If you look closely, you can see that this white substance is alive. It resembles soft, wet paper that is easy to tear. The thing is billions of living organisms, bacteria called autotrophs. There's much more carbon dioxide in the cave than there is outside. And these bacteria, like plants, absorb it. But they don't do this with the help of photosynthesis, which means they don't need sunlight. They use water for chemosynthesis. What these bacteria secrete is food for other bacteria. And these other bacteria are food for bigger creatures. A unique food cycle that you can't find anywhere else on the planet only exists here. In a frosty Canadian park, hidden deep beneath layers of thick ice, scientists discovered a bizarre skeleton they named the Frozen Dragon. The skeleton had been in the frozen ice for millions of years. It took experts decades to work out the species of this strange fossil. It was identified as a new genus of pterosaur. Pterosaurs were massive flying reptiles with wingspans of over 16 feet. Their heads were 3.5 times the size of their bodies. Pterosaurs lived 76 million years ago when they soared above the dinosaurs. Scientists described them as the biggest, meanest, and most bizarre animals that ever flew. The new genus has been named Cryodracon boreus, which translates to frozen dragon of the north winds. In 2013, a young mountaineer was climbing one of the tallest mountains in Western Europe, 
Mont Blanc. He noticed a strange metal box poking out of the snow. The mountaineer pried the box open and found that it was filled with precious rubies, emeralds, and sapphires. The climber immediately handed the box to the authorities. It was discovered that the box likely belonged to a passenger on one of two flights from India that crashed into the mountain over 50 years ago. The box was valued to be worth over $200,000, and authorities are still searching for the heir to the small box of treasures. In northwest Siberia in 2007, a reindeer herder was on an outing with his sons when he noticed something strange in the ice. The man realized it was a frozen mammoth calf and immediately contacted the local museum. The calf was named Luba and was the best preserved mammoth mummy in the world at the time of its discovery. Luba had been in the ice for 41,800 years and is around 30 to 35 days old. From trunk to tail, the mammoth calf is roughly the same size as a large calf. If you're interested in seeing for yourself, Luba travels to museums all around the world. On the frozen continent of Antarctica, covered in layers of ice and snow, is Mount Erebus, the frozen volcano. The volcano was discovered in the middle of an eruption in 1841 by explorers on an Arctic expedition. The volcano is over 12,000 feet tall and has been active for the last 1.3 million years. Deep within the middle of the volcano is a huge crater filled with large volumes of molten lava. The volcano has occasional explosions, which means it's classified as being in continuing eruption. However, these eruptions are nothing to worry about because they are generally rather small. Back in 1991, two hikers were traveling across the Italian Alps when they stumbled across a body that they presumed to belong to a recently lost hiker. The duo trudged back down the mountain to report their unfortunate findings. Once the remains were recovered, it was clear that the body was not recent at all. Scientists determined that the Iceman was more than 5,000 years old and named him Otzi. The discovery was unlike anything scientists had ever before seen because the body was so well preserved. For years, Otzi was studied by scientists who discovered that our ancestors have a lot more in common with us than we ever knew before. Otzi was covered in ink body art. Research done on the contents of his stomach revealed that his last meal was dry cured meat, similar to the bacon we eat today. Otzi has at least 19 relatives living today, somewhere in Central Europe. Scientists were researching ancient squirrel burrows in Siberia when they came across something interesting. One of the squirrels had hidden away precious seeds deep beneath the ground. The seeds had been encased in ice for 32,000 years. The seeds were for the flower Silene stenophilia, which had long since gone extinct. Amazingly, scientists were able to recover plant tissue from inside the seeds and grow an entire crop of flowers. They've since reintroduced the previously extinct flower to natural habitats all across the world. In 1930, a team of Norwegian scientists sailed around the Arctic Ocean, conducting research on the seas and glaciers. They reached White Island, a dangerous and icy land no human had set foot on before, or so they thought. The scientists were shocked to discover the tip of a small boat sticking out of the snow. Frozen inside the boat, they found scientific equipment and various personal items, including a jacket monogrammed S.A. Andre. They had discovered the wreck of the famous Andre Arctic Balloon Expedition. In 1897, Swedish explorers, led by Andre, attempted to travel to the North Pole by hydrogen balloon. No one had ever heard from them ever again. People only found out what happened to them when the wreck was discovered 33 years later. It turns out that the balloon had crashed on White Island only two days after departing from Sweden. The explorers traveled along the island on a small makeshift boat, but were unable to make it any further. The best preserved woolly mammoth ever found was discovered in an area of permafrost in Siberia in 2010. Scientists named the frozen mammoth Yuka after the small village near where it was found. Yuka had been frozen for 39,000 years and is thought to have been around six to eight years old. Because yuca is so well preserved, it has been studied for years and provided new information about mammoths. In 2019, 
scientists reported that they were able to activate cells taken from Yucca's tissue. Maybe one day, we'll have woolly mammoths roaming the land. From looking at pictures and videos of Antarctica, the continent appears to be freezing cold, covered in snow, and flat, except for a few small hills. Scientists believe that too. When studying the Gumbertsev Mountains in the early 2000s, they were shocked to discover that the small rocky hills were actually the peak of a gigantic mountain formation under a mile of snow. Using radar technology, researchers worked out that the mountains are really around 10,000 feet tall and sprawl across 750 miles. This is around the same size as the European Alps, except hidden under tons of ice and snow. At a gold mine in Siberia, a businessman was examining a nearby river when he noticed something interesting in the frost. It was a small woolly rhino calf that was later named Sasha. The woolly rhino has been extinct for 15,000 years. It's thought that Sasha could have been frozen in the ice for up to 39,000 years. Sasha is unique because it's the only full-body woolly rhino to have ever been discovered. Glaciers around the northern Italian town of Palo have begun to melt. Artifacts from decades and even centuries ago have been discovered pouring out of the ice. Personal belongings from soldiers have been found, things like diaries, photographs, and even love letters. Historians have even uncovered an entire cabin preserved beneath the ice. The cabin was filled with hard metal helmets and clothes. In 1845, Sir John Franklin embarked on an ill-fated expedition to the North Pole. The crew traveled on two ships, HMS Erebus and the ironically named HMS Terror. The expedition met with disaster and both ships were lost to the icy waters. In 2016, the HMS Terror was discovered by a team of researchers. Despite being lost for 170 years, the freezing cold waters had maintained the ship in pristine condition. Scientists described the ship as frozen in time. Dinner plates and glasses were still on shelves, beds and desks were still in order, and even the passengers' luggage appeared to be in good condition. The HMS Erebus was also discovered nearby, but due to changing water conditions, the ship wasn't in great shape. The glacial ice surrounding a mountain passageway in Norway that was notoriously used by the Vikings has revealed hundreds of ancient artifacts. One of these artifacts was a giant unopened wooden box that was welded together. Researchers were beside themselves with anticipation, waiting to open this box. They believed it would be filled with Viking treasures or artifacts that would give us an insight into ancient society. When they opened the box, all that was inside was a plain old beeswax candle. It turns out that this box wasn't actually as old as they thought it was. By analyzing the candle, they discovered that the box dates back to the 17th century. The age of the Vikings had ended by the 11th century. It's likely that the candle box belonged to a farmer who was shipping it from his summer farm to his winter farm to light up the long nights. In the high altitudes of northern China, there is one mountain that remains frozen all year round. It's a naturally occurring spot of cold earth. A thick layer of permafrost lies underneath the mountain's top layer of soil, freezing everything above it. The climate-defying pocket of frozen land covers over 26 feet of a mountain slope in Pingchuyen County a place famous for its scorching hot summers, reaching highs of 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This frozen spot of land manages to survive the blazing temperatures due to the coarse blocky layer of soil covering the permafrost. This coarse soil prevents the hot climate from reaching and melting the permafrost, allowing the ground to stay frozen all year round. Argentina may be famous for its beautiful beaches and hot sun, but in southern Argentina, you can find Perito Moreno Glacier, this stunning blue glacier covers over 100 square miles and is constantly growing. When visiting this natural wonder, you might notice an archway of ice forming off the side of the glacier, reaching out to the nearby land. Suddenly, the archway ruptures and the ice collapses into the water below. This is completely natural. The glacier goes through a process of forming these arches until they collapse. It'll form another one in no time. On California's Glass Beach, there is no sand and only colorful gemstone-like pebbles called sea glass. Surprisingly, these beautiful pebbles are the result of garbage. For decades, the beach was used as a massive dumping ground for locals to abandon their glass, appliances, and even cars on the beachfront. 
The state eventually prohibited anyone from disposing of their garbage on the beach. Over the years, the waves broke down all the remaining junk and turned it into brightly colored pebbles that attract tourists from all over. The highest waterfall in the world, Angel Falls, can be found in southern Venezuela. The water there travels along one of the biggest tabletop mountains in Venezuela and plummets 2,500 feet down into the jungle below. That's three times taller than the Eiffel Tower. The water falls from so high that most of it evaporates into mist before even reaching the ground. Visitors can feel the mist settling on their skin from over half a mile away. In Scotland, hidden away from the main roads and tucked deep within the woodlands, is Fittick Glen. This area looks like something out of an ancient fairy tale, with looming glass moss-covered rock formations and crimson red waters. The water's red color is due to the red sandstone lying beneath the shallow river. To get to this stunning natural beauty, you have to embark on a dangerous hike down steep muddy hills, clambering onto trees to stop you from falling. But when you reach the bottom, it'll all have been worth it to watch the sunlight shine off the ruby waters and see the towering rocks of this enchanting world. With bubblegum pink water and a surrounding circle of emerald green forests, it's hard to believe that Lake Hillier is a real place. Located in Western Australia, no one can truly explain why the lake has pink color. However, scientists have theorized that the high quantities of salt in the lake have attracted a salt-loving pink bacteria called halobacteria, responsible for the lake's trademark shade. In a small peninsula in South America, there is one of the most beautiful natural wonders in the world, the marble caves. These look like any other caves from the outside. Inside these caves, the walls consist of smooth, swirling blue marble formations. Over thousands of years, water has eroded the marble deposits within these caves, forming this unique cave system. So while deep blue color seems like it's part of the marble, it's the reflection of the water that causes these blue shades along the cave walls. Azerbaijan's mud volcanoes are exactly what they sound like. Over 300 of these natural phenomena are located in Azerbaijan, more than anywhere else in the world. There have been over 200 eruptions since records began. Mud volcanoes are landforms caused by the eruption of mud, water, and gases. Pockets of gas form underground and force their way to the surface, eventually erupting and splattering mud everywhere. These volcanoes can be pretty dangerous. In 2006, a mud volcano erupted in Indonesia and coated an entire nearby village in thick mud. Pamuk Kale is a marvelous hillside of tiered thermal pools. The name of the Turkish city translates to Cotton Castle. The pools are made of travertine, a type of limestone that gives the hillside its stunning white color. In addition, the stone has geothermal properties making the pools hot springs. There are 17 pools in total, and all are open to the public seven days a week. The temperatures range from 95 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. They are essentially nature's version of a hot tub. Legend has it that the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland was formed when a great Irish giant was challenged to battle a Scottish giant. The causeway was built across the sea so the two giants could meet. When the Irish giant defeated his foe, the Scottish giant ran home and destroyed the causeway behind him. All that remains are the beginnings of the causeway at the water's edge. The stunning rock formation of interlocking columns was the result of an ancient volcanic eruption. The columns are a hexagonal shape and form a natural staircase from the Irish Sea to a foot of a cliff. The tallest columns are 39 feet high. The Giant's Causeway is the most popular tourist destination in Northern Ireland, receiving almost 1 million visitors in 2019. Deep within the Nica Mines in Mexico, you can find the Cave of Crystals. The cave is full of massive shards of bright selenite crystals. The largest is 37 feet tall. These are some of the largest natural crystals in the world. It's thought that the water that previously filled the cave was incredibly rich in minerals, allowing the crystals to grow to their full potential. Unfortunately, tourists cannot visit the Cave of Crystals due to its scorching temperature and humid conditions. Even scientists are required to have a special permit to enter the cave. The River of Five Colors is located in the Colombian province of Meta, known locally as the Rainbow River. The waters are famous for their striking colors. The river is variously colored yellow, green, blue, black, and most prominently red from summer till winter. Due to a lack of nutrients, the river's water is naturally clear, so it's easy to see diverse and colorful plant life on the riverbed. It's these vibrant plants that give the waters its many colors. 
In New Zealand, you can take a boat ride through the beautiful Waitomo Caves. The walls of the caves glow luminescent, like bright stars against the night sky. But these glowing lights aren't stars, they're worms. Luminescent glow worms live in the walls of the cave, giving the cave its trademark glow. The particular species of glow worms cannot be found anywhere else in the world. For thousands of years, the fairy chimneys have stood tall in Cappadocia, Turkey. These unusual rock formations are tall, thin spires of rock that were initially formed by lava. The tallest chimney is 130 feet high. Humans have hollowed out the insides of these rocks for hundreds of years to create homes for themselves. Today you can visit one of the many hotels that currently exist inside the fairy chimneys. Wave Rock is a popular spot for a photo shoot in Western Australia. The giant rock is 46 feet tall and shaped like a breaking ocean wave. Millions of years of strong winds and hard rainfall eroded the rock into the wave-like shape it has today. The rock has a stunning mix of red and gray colors caused by minerals washed down the rock. The site of the Wave Rock has become a famous camping ground due to its proximity to beautiful lakes and a variety of wildlife. The Zanyi National Geo Park in China has previously been voted one of the most beautiful landscapes in the world. The park is famous for its colorful rock formations, popularly known as the Rainbow Mountains. Layers of minerals and different colored sandstone were slowly pushed together across 24 million years to create the stunning landscape. It's winter, 1980. We're in the small town of Lengbe. 19-year-old Jean Hilliard is driving home after meeting with a friend. She takes a shortcut and turns into an icy, slippery road. In the dark, she loses control of the rear-wheel drive car. The vehicle crashes into a ditch. Emergency lights, snowfall, night, and a hard frost. Jean gets out of the vehicle. She's wearing only a light winter coat, mittens, and cowboy boots. The air temperature is much lower than in a freezer. Jean is sure that her friend lives nearby, so she goes that way. She climbs a high hill and realizes she's taken the wrong route. It seems she's gotten lost. The girl wanders a couple more miles and notices her other friend's house in the distance. Freezing, she walks there. Then everything turns black. Jean loses consciousness. The next morning, rancher Wally Nelson wakes up in a great mood. It's the holiday season. There's a winter fairy tale outside the window. He leaves his house and notices the body of Jean Hilliard lying just a few feet from his porch. Wally approaches the girl, shakes her, and is horrified. Her body is stiff and cold like frozen wood. Her eyes are open and don't move. Her hair is frozen. She just doesn't look alive. But Wally sees that she's still breathing. Jean has managed to survive. Wally wants to put her in his car to bring her to the doctor. But the girl's body doesn't bend and can't fit into the auto. It feels like a statue. He takes a bigger car and rushes to the hospital as fast as possible. The doctors take Jean, but they don't think she has any chance to make it. Her hand is so hard and frozen that no needle can penetrate it. A low temperature, glassy eyes, and muscles as hard as stone are all the results of emergency mode. Her body has directed all the blood to the vital organs to ensure their functioning. That's why other parts of her body look so lifeless and her skin and muscles don't react to anything. The doctors decide to put heating pads on the girl to warm her up. Her family hopes for her recovery, but right now, all they can do is just wait. Frostbite is so dangerous because all that frozen liquid begins to expand. Fill a small bottle with water and put it in the freezer for a few hours. Then take it out and you'll see that the bottle seems to have expanded or even cracked because of the increased volume of the liquid. The same thing happens inside our bodies. We consist of almost 70% water. 
When it freezes, its particles turn into ice crystals and tear cell membranes. Ice fragments can stretch and destroy tissue. This is called frostbite. Also, our body can slow down all internal processes in extreme cold conditions to save strength and energy. The heart makes fewer beats, and the lungs stop consuming lots of oxygen. Metabolism slows down. It happened with Jean, and perhaps it is what saved her life that day. She was lying in the snow in severe frost for about 6 hours. But why didn't the ice particles start destroying her cell membranes? How did her body withstand such damage and manage to survive? Back at the hospital, doctors are happy to watch Jean get better. Warm blood spreads through the frozen vessels and brings her body back to life. Surprisingly, ice crystals haven't damaged her muscles and skin. A few hours later, the girl regains consciousness. By noon, she starts talking. Jean doesn't know what happened. She remembers walking to her friend's house and then waking up in the hospital. What worries her most right now is that her father's car is somewhere in a ditch. As it turns out, the girl fell down and crawled on all fours to Wally Nelson's house. She doesn't remember it, but apparently, her brain activated the survival instinct that night. Unfortunately, she didn't manage to crawl the last few feet. Jean passed out at the door and stayed there for six hours. Doctors examine the girl and understand that she's completely healthy. Soon, she's discharged from the hospital. This case isn't unique. One professor of emergency medicine, David Plummer, said he'd seen about 12 similar cases over the past 10 years when patients had survived severe frostbite. Jean returns home and finds out that she has become famous. People write about her in newspapers, want to interview her, and film documentary shows. Her case has attracted the attention of many doctors around the world. But no one has been able to find out exactly how she managed to survive. In the case of humans, such recoveries seem like an absolute miracle. But many creatures of the natural world can adapt their bodies to extreme conditions. One of them is the tree frog. These animals live mainly in temperate and tropical parts of Eurasia. Sometimes they have to contend with cold weather. Their body injects glucose into the bloodstream when they feel they're freezing. And the content of their cells turns into syrup. Sugar lowers the freezing point of water. So, tree frogs have adapted to such conditions. The water outside their cells can freeze. Their bodies can get as hard as ice cubes. But they will be alive, feeling great. Then, when it gets warmer, they fully recover. The blood fills their body and puts all their muscles in motion. But one of the most amazing animals that can withstand freezing temperatures is the ghoulish ice fish. It's transparent and somewhat like a jellyfish. It swims in the dark, cold Antarctic waters. The ghoulish ice fish feels comfortable there because of the antifreeze in its body. More precisely, it's a unique substance that is like antifreeze in its functions. This liquid doesn't allow the animal's cells, organs, and the whole body to freeze. There are no red blood cells in the fish's blood that transport oxygen throughout its body. This is the only vertebrate with such a superpower. There are organisms on our planet that use the coal to prolong their life. Scientists have found some of them in the ice of Siberia. Those are microscopic, multi-celled creatures, like small worms, that can live in a freezer for about 10 years. But the worms from Siberia were about 24,000 years old. The scientists transported them to the laboratory and thawed them. The worms came to life and began to multiply immediately after all those centuries of sleep. Their bodies can go into cryptobiosis. This is when an entire frozen organism has minimal vital functions. The analysis showed that the worms could stay in this mode for tens of thousands of years. And there are many such animals on our planet. Also, these creatures are some of the world's most resistant to radiation. They are practically invulnerable. Now back to our story. It's possible that Jean Hilliard's body went into short cryptobiosis. 
Perhaps there was some non-freezing liquid in the girl's blood, but no one knows for sure. These days, she has an ordinary job and almost doesn't remember that day. Further research on this topic can help scientists create special medicines that can help in freezing temperatures. Just imagine that you could safely go outside in the winter wearing a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. Steam would be coming off your body, and the ice under your feet would be melting. You'd feel hot inside. A dream, perhaps. But realistically, winter coat manufacturers would, of course, never allow it. You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches cracking under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some sort. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep in the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's actually a 12-foot-tall staircase, and it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing there in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is this staircase. But weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay. You and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. You can't explain the feeling or take your eyes off the creepy staircase. You take out your phone and snap some pictures. Then, after a lot of hesitation, you take a few steps closer and notice that the stairs don't seem to be all that ancient, a few decades old at best. There's moss growing out from some cracks. Your friends have had enough. They ditch you and run back off to the trail leaving you alone on the staircase. You put your foot carefully on the first step. Wham! Adrenaline rush. As you ascend to the top, someone touches your shoulder. You jump and turn around. All you see is black. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others are bricks or stones. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere, and they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that led to a tiny platform at the top. Why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some experts think it could have been some sort of ritual tower. But your guess is as good as theirs. Some of the more modern staircases found in the woods also have an added bonus. They come with their own urban legends. Gee, would that be a two-story or three-story staircase? (laughs) One of the most popular stories comes from the Philippines, where a forest ranger called Torkik allegedly went out on one of his routine patrols to look for missing people deep in the local jungle. That's where he claims he found some seriously out-of-place stone staircases. They even had weird markings on them. To get a better look at what was around him, he decided to climb up one of them. Just then, he was approached by a vicious stray dog that forced him further up the stairs. A few hours later, he came back to the village. Only thing was, he had been missing for five years. 
Was that staircase a time-traveling portal? Hmm. Another account allegedly dates back to the 1940s, around the time of the Roswell UFO mystery. A man who claimed to be a scientist was sent to assist in investigating one of the many animal-related cases that kept popping up. Little did he know, this one- to two-week investigation would end up lasting six months. His team encountered a random wooden staircase in the woods that seemed to emit some type of frequency. They camped around 100 feet from it that night, but the next morning, it vanished. All that was left was a black burn mark where the staircase was. Two days later, it reappeared out of nowhere, 160 feet from its original location. The team wanted to get a sample of the wood to send it off to the lab. There was one problem. No matter how hard they tried, it was impossible to chip off a piece. The wood from the staircase was apparently indestructible. These weird mystery stairs have been around since ancient Cambodia. Right in the middle of the jungle is an abandoned 2,000-foot-long staircase leading to… yup, nowhere. According to experts, this staircase was built about a thousand years ago. They don't know for sure, but they think it led to an ancient city. Sadly, over the years, that city is now completely covered by the dense jungle. Maybe it was an important meeting spot for travelers and merchants coming from all over the continent. Well, back to your story. You feel a strange presence behind you. You turn around, probably one of your friends snuck up on you or something. But then, you realize there was no one behind you. You're the only one around. You freak out. Something is definitely wrong here. So you rush down the stairs and bolt back to your friends, panting and startled. You start to tell your friends what happened, but they don't believe you. They think you're just trying to scare them even more. But the emotion on your face, it looks legit. There's real panic in your eyes, the kind you just can't fake. Shadow or wind or whatever that thing was, your fear's real. You all agree that you should stay away from the stairs, and it's probably best if you go back home. Right now. I guess camping out there overnight just wasn't meant to be. As soon as you get home, you open your phone and check out your gallery. But no! You scroll through photo after photo. The staircase! It isn't there! None of the pictures have any staircases in them. Just a small, flat clearing with nothing but trees around. No weird shadows. Nothing. Your friends have the same experience. Your eye twitches and you look over your left shoulder. You're in the safety of your own home, but you suddenly feel the same presence you felt on that staircase. Oh no! Everything goes black. But you can relax. Most of these stories are just urban legends, told to give you the heebie-jeebies. The internet has a way of spreading rumors faster than the speed of light. Most of these stairs might have even been built on purpose just recently. One weekend woodshop project, a couple of photos, and you too could be a sensation on every urban legend website. Then you just tear it down, take a photo to show it magically disappeared, and just like that, you're an internet superstar. But let's say you find some real stairs on your weekend camping trip. They're most likely the remnants from an old house or a cabin that got demolished or just collapsed after it was abandoned. Hey, it's 2021. There's a logical explanation for just about everything these days. That presence you felt was most likely your own mind playing tricks on you. When you see something in real life that looks like something you saw on a website or a scary movie, your mind starts to work overtime, and you can actually see something or feel something that's not even there. That's what some people say happens when you get hypnotized. You want to see something so bad, and you do. That's probably what happened. Or was it? This may sound mind-boggling, but scientists found a 385-million-year-old root network. Yeah, it's like a fossilized web of roots that's got them all excited. They're reimagining what the world's first forest might have looked like, and let me tell you, it's not what you'd expect. Under an old highway department quarry near Cairo, New York, they found the remains of a mighty and mature old-growth forest. This place was home to at least three of the world's earliest tree-like plants. But these plants, in fact, looked nothing like trees. 
one of them looked like giant stalks of celery. The second type resembled pine trees with hairy fern-like fronds for leaves. And the third plant was like a palm tree with a bulbous base and fern-like branches. It's like they couldn't decide what they wanted to be when they grew up. But here's the kicker. These primordial trees were quite old and large, so they weren't packed densely together. They were relatively scattered across a floodplain that ebbed and flowed with the seasons. And even though dry periods were a regular part of the cycle, these tree-like plants thrived in semi-arid conditions. Their roots had adapted to the possibility of short-term flooding, which is confusing because they're not supposed to survive in those conditions. But wait, it gets even weirder. Other trees in the area came more prepared for bouts of water scarcity. There were extinct pine tree-like plants with deeper root systems that could spread 36 feet wide and 23 feet deep. These guys were more advanced than the fern-like trees and had true leaves that could photosynthesize. It's like they were showing off or something. So why did the fern-like trees dominate prehistoric deltas while the pine-like trees dominated the floodplains? It's like they didn't even care about setting up near rivers or water sources that could carry their genes farther afield. Maybe they were just rebels without a cause, doing their own thing and not caring what anyone else thought. In any case, this finding has got evolutionary ecologists all excited. They're saying that the earliest trees could colonize a range of environments and weren't limited to wet areas. Who knew trees were so versatile? As an experienced sailor and the first man to ever sail non-stop on his own around North and South America, Matt Rutherford has seen a lot during his voyages. But what he saw in 2013 while sailing through the waters of the Atlantic with his colleague surely stands out. Some 800 miles off the coast of Bermuda, not far away from the famous Bermuda Triangle, they noticed a boat that seemed to be moving by itself. The sails weren't up and the motor wasn't running. The sailors decided to check if there was someone who needed their help aboard, so they moved closer to the mysterious ship. Once they got there, things only got weirder, as they realized there wasn't a living soul aboard. Rutherford started filming to document their discovery. The boat looked so awfully abandoned that they expected to find some pretty scary things in there. But it didn't stop Rutherford from searching the vessel. The boat, which turned out to be named Wolfhound, looked like an upscale one probably costing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was pretty weird to find it floating by itself in the middle of the ocean. It seemed like whoever abandoned it was leaving in a rush. There were clothes and other personal belongings all over the main cabin. Some parts of the ceiling had fallen and some drawers had popped open. The brave sailors decided to tow the ghost ship back to Bermuda. It wasn't easy because Wolfhound was bigger and heavier than their boat. After days at sea, the crew was running low on fuel and asked a passing freighter to stop and give them some gas. They kept pulling Wolfhound until the tow line got wrapped around the rudder and they realized they could get stranded in the Bermuda Triangle. So they had to abandon the ship. What really happened and how Wolfhound ended up in the middle of the ocean will probably remain a mystery. Rumor has it that it belonged to a member of the Royal Irish Yacht Club. The ship was going on its first voyage from Connecticut to Bermuda and then Antigua. It got in a terrible storm around 400 miles away from Delaware. The winds were so strong that the yacht suffered two knockdowns. A Greek cargo ship rescued the crew. They left the ship with an emergency beacon on. The rescued crew members shared that they saw the ship sink, which only adds more questions to the story. How did it get back to the surface? Does the Bermuda Triangle have anything to do with that? Christopher Columbus himself reported some unusual compass activity going on in this mysterious area while he was on his way to the New World. Despite the stories of more than 50 ships and 20 planes disappearing in the area, it remains one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. 
It could make sense because the busier the area, the more accidents happen there. But then again, it's not the number of disappearances that makes the place so mysterious. It's the lack of explanation and wreckage lost for good. The first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle was the USS Pickering. In 1800, it departed from the US on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew. No one ever heard anything from them ever since. The popular explanation is that the ship was taken out by a storm. But because no one found any wreckage, we'll never know for sure. The largest ship that has ever disappeared in this mysterious area was the USS Cyclops. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and vanished into thin air, or rather, water. The Cyclops never sent any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation or trace. The Bermuda Triangle isn't the only place in the world where ships go missing or mysteriously resurface. One of the most famous ghost ship stories would be of SS Bechimo. The large cargo steamer was built in Sweden. On October 1, 1931, it got caught in pack ice. The crew decided to wait it out and managed to break free after a couple of days, only to get trapped again in less than a week. This time, they didn't manage to make it out. A rescue team went by air to save 22 of the crew members. 15 other members stayed in a wooden shelter they built not far away from the ship. Their plan was to wait out the winter and get back aboard. At the end of November, a strong blizzard was rushing through the area. When it was over, Bechimo seemed to have gone away with the storm. The captain decided it must have broken and sunk. But a few days later, a local hunter informed them that he had seen the ship around 45 miles away from their camp. The crew managed to find the ship and took the most valuable cargo from its hold. They had fears that Bechimo wouldn't live through that rough water but it did manage to survive after all. Once the ice was gone, it floated away and ended up drifting along the shores of Canada and Alaska. Many people reported seeing the ghost ship in an open sea. Some even tried to board it to save the ship, but the weather didn't allow it to happen. The last time someone saw SS Bechimo was in 1969, 38 years after its crew had left it it could still be drifting somewhere in the ocean. The story of MV Hoyita happened in the South Pacific. The ship was originally a wooden luxury yacht. After serving for 20 years to various owners, it became a merchant ship. In 1959, it set on a trading voyage that was supposed to last around two days. When it didn't reach its destination on time, no one was worried at first as things happen in the open waters. After another day and no distress signals from the Hoyita, it was obvious that something serious was going on with it. There were 25 people aboard and their families wanted to find them. A search and rescue crew worked for six days looking for the ship or at least its wreckage in an area of nearly 100,000 square miles. That's one and a half times as big as Florida. Sadly, the mission had come back with no results. It seemed like Hoyita had disappeared without a trace. A month later, another merchant ship noticed Hoyita driving in the ocean, miles and miles away from its original route, and none of the crew members or passengers were on board. The cargo had also disappeared. The lifeboats were also gone, so the people must have escaped the ship hoping to save themselves. It turned out that the crew had been trying to get help as they tuned the radio to the International Distress Channel. But the damaged cable didn't let them send the signal any further than two miles. It also looked like when they were leaving the ship, the crew took the logbook with them 
and we still don't know what exactly happened to Hoyita. Family members of those who were on board are still looking for answers. One professor claims it must have been a corroded pipe that leaked and flooded the vessel, but we'll most likely never know for sure. In the Pacific Ocean, near Japan, there is an area nicknamed the Devil's Sea. It's believed to be one of the 12 vile vortices around the Earth. Some people claim that vile vortices have weird things going on in them because the pull of the planet's electromagnetic waves is stronger there than anywhere else. The most famous ship that disappeared in the area was a fishery patrol vessel in 1952. The ship went there to investigate the vessels that went missing previously and disappeared along with 31 crew members. Scientists who don't believe it was a mysterious disappearance blame the underwater volcano eruption for what happened. The coldest part of our planet, Antarctica, keeps surprising us. Take a look at this waterfall named Blood Falls. Reddish water falls from the white ice. Scientists concluded that the color is related to iron. The water coming from the glacier oxidizes and rusts when it's exposed to oxygen, and the red color occurs. Step on Mount Gandic. It lays eggs. Well, maybe not real eggs, but the stones certainly look like dinosaur eggs. That's why the mountain got its fame. The, let's call them stone eggs, formed in one part of the mountain over 500 million years ago. Interestingly, this phenomenon repeats once every 30 years. Eggs come out in various sizes and shades. The stones appear on the surface of the cliff. A study made in the area has revealed that the composition of the stones of the cliff isn't similar to other parts of the mountain. Here, calcareous rocks rule. They're more prone to erosion. They ripen off day by day. It took three decades for the stones to get to the egg shape. Yet, it's still a mystery how these rock formations can be so perfectly spherical and smooth. According to scientists, every stone egg has an organic core. They're made of shells, plant remains, fish teeth, and skeletons. Maybe this has something to do with it. Gulu Village is close to the stone eggs. Locals believe that these eggs are sacred. Villagers associate it with good fortune. In fact, nearly every family has one of these eggs in their house. Unfortunately, there are only about 70 eggs left, so if you want to see them, you gotta hurry up! The Rich Hat structure is a circular geological phenomenon in the Sahara Desert near Mauritania. It's made out of rocks in layers, and these layers look very much like rings. No wonder the unique structure even got NASA's attention. Up from the sky, the geological feature seems to be swirling and spinning. Scientists are still not sure how these rings got there. Some say it was an asteroid impact. Many others believe that it was a natural geological process. To them, the Rich Hat structure is an uplifted and eroded dome. Geologists often classify it as a domed anticline. The scientists discovered that the rocks at the center are older than the ring-shaped outer rocks. So it seems like the stones have been eroded to flat rock layers. Anyway, there's no valid explanation for this phenomenon, and the 28-mile-long mystery of the Sahara is still to be solved. Number 4 is Rapa Nui, or Isla de Pasqua. But I bet you know it as Easter Island. Yeah, it's got three names. It was discovered by Jacob Rogovine, who actually never intended to look for that island. He just casually landed there one Sunday. That's where the name comes from. Jacob was supposed to find Terra Australis. Disclaimer, it's not Australia. This one never existed and was nothing but a hypothetical continent. Plus, he wanted to peek at Davis Land, which was believed to have once been seen by Edward Davis, the pirate, not Edward Davis the saxophone player. Jacob failed at that too, though nobody ever saw that island except for the pirate Davis. Jacob may have failed to discover some lands he wanted to, but he discovered Easter Island instead. This is an island and special territory of Chile, located in the southeastern Pacific Ocean. It's on my list because nearly 1,000 stone statues called Moai were found there. They were created by the Rapa Nui people. Nearly all statues represent gigantic heads, but there are also a small number of figures kneeling with their hands over their stomachs. 
Each statue represented chiefs or other important members of Easter Island society. To curve those statues, the locals used volcanic stones that were softened. Our next stop is the gateway to the underworld. Nah, don't worry. This is just how people labeled Darvaza gas crater in Turkmenistan. This giant natural gas crater has been there for five decades. This crater is continuously burning gases. The president of the country wants experts to find a way to extinguish this continuous firing pit. This site was created by people accidentally in 1971 while working on a natural gas project. Ever since then, the flames have been on and it's become a tourist attraction. Mysterious constructions are sometimes built in our era, too. We don't have to go millions of years ago to long-gone civilizations. Edward Leach Scollin single-handedly built a structure called Coral Castle in Homestead, Florida. He didn't use any large machinery. He carved and sculpted more than 1,100 tons of coral rock in 28 years until 1951. It's a mystery how he managed to do it all by himself. Leedscallon sculpted the sedimentary rock into different objects, such as walls, tables, chairs, a fountain, and a sundial. There's, of course, a legend behind this mystery, too. He was inspired to build the structure after being abandoned by his fiancée on their wedding day. Uh-oh, runaway bride! Well, he wanted to prove his love to her and the world, so he wanted to do something extraordinary. Well, he definitely nailed it! Now, let's talk a little bit about the mystery of the Namibian fairy circles. There are millions of circular patches in hundreds of miles, ranging from 10 to 65 feet in diameter. They're called fairy circles because they look like a fairy or an otherworldly creature made them. These are essentially oval-shaped soil surrounded by grass. There are a lot of local beliefs surrounding the creator of these marks, yet science says something else. Biologists and mathematicians have been puzzled by the mystery of the Namibian fairy circles for decades. There is more than one theory to explain this phenomenon. Here's one popular theory. The water is limited in the desert, so plants compete to reach the water. Some plants expand and thrive into a patch, but smaller plants nearby cannot get the necessary water to live. In the end, some vegetation disappears, and the remaining ones stay at the patch's edges. That's why they form such regular distant gaps. What if I tell you that there is a hill in Leh wow. City, India, where instead of rolling downwards, things roll uphill? It's an optical illusion. The road looks like it's a sloping hill because of its surrounding landscapes, yet the road actually goes down. These kinds of hills are called magnetic hills or gravity hills. Scientific explanations vary. The most common theory says that the hill has such a strong magnetic force that it can pull cars in the vicinity. Now, how about seeing some flaming rocks? Yanartash spread over an area of over 3 square miles. The place is located on a rocky mountain in southwest Turkey near the town of Chiaralea. Yanartash got its name from its appearance. It literally means flaming stone. The rocks have been flaming for at least 2,500 years, and they'll probably keep burning for the coming decades. The mountain where the rocks are is an inactive volcano, so it's full of tiny fumaroles that release gases such as methane. The gas ignites when it comes into contact with oxygen and creates the flaming effect. Uh, and by the way, back in the day, sailors used the flames as a natural lighthouse, as it's really close to the sea. Today, it's more of a tourist attraction, though. Hikers love it, too. Now, walk on this frozen Lake Abraham in Canada. In winter, the frozen water gets filled with ice bubbles. It looks magical, but these white orbs aren't that safe. They consist of flammable methane gas. Ew. Beauty can be misleading. The next one is from Racetrack Death Valley, USA. There is a dry lake bed with moving rocks. Now these odd rocks look as if they've been pushed or dragged by someone or something. They leave both a trail and a mystery behind. The force behind all this is now understood. Surprise! It's the wind and some ice. Scientists say the wind pushes the rocks during brief windows when the soil is covered with ice. Now I can't help- Are you used to picking up hitchhikers on your long commute to work? you might want to hear about the Hitchhiker Road Scam. 
this trick preys on unsuspecting drivers. The scam typically starts with a person posing as a hitchhiker who flags down a car on the side of the road. They may claim to be stranded or in need of a ride to a nearby town or city. In some cases, the hitchhiker may ask the driver to pull over at a specific location, such as a gas station or convenience store, where they will then disappear with the driver's money or other valuables. This scam can also be done in groups, where a bunch of people will flag down a car and ask for a ride. And once the car is on the move, they will threaten the driver and steal money, valuables, or even the car itself. It's important to be aware of this scam and to always be cautious when picking up hitchhikers. It's best to avoid giving money or other valuables to anyone who claims to need a ride and to never pull over at a location that is not safe or familiar. Hitchhikers are not the only reason why you might get into trouble on the road. A slice of cheese isn't something you'd expect to find on your parked car, am I right? Well, it might indicate something quite dangerous. One woman told the story of such an experience online, thinking it was just a prank made by some neighborhood youngster. She decided to call a friend and ask for help with cleaning the car up. But once the two ladies started rubbing off the melted cheese from her windshield, they saw something strange nearby. She remembered seeing a white van arriving. In it were a bunch of men suspiciously staring at them. She wasn't alone, so she decided it was safe enough to finish cleaning up the car, even though they didn't feel comfortable being stared at. It took them almost an hour to scrape off the cheese that had melted under the heat. She did wonder, though, if this wasn't a tactic to rob a person. That's because most people would be so focused on cleaning up the mess on their car, they'd be distracted from keeping an eye on the thing they left in the car, like bags, wallets, or even recent shopping items. Or worse, what if it was a kidnapping strategy? That sticky cheese would keep a person really concentrated on fixing the car, so they wouldn't be able to see suspicious people coming at them in due course. The key takeaway from this story, if you ever see a piece of cheese on your car, might as well leave it as it is, as long as it's not blocking your view and it doesn't really affect your driving. Your safest bet is to just clean it at home or take it to the nearest car wash. They'll know the best way to clean up the vehicle without ruining the paint. Sure, the piece of cheese on a car scam might just be a coincidence, but some scams out there are more legitimate with this next one being quite the unusual method when it comes to snatching away other people's cars. If you notice a t-shirt or a hoodie on your windshield, or even wrapped between your wiper blades, don't be so quick to take it away. Again, it can be placed there on purpose to distract you while your car gets taken away. Drive away as quickly as possible if you can, and get to a safe location that's well lit and filled with many people. There you can remove whatever object you have on the car without any risks. Some people have even found money under their wiper blades. It's easy to imagine that those who left it there probably had the same intention in mind. There are methods to help when it comes to decreasing your odds of getting your car snatched away. Keep your tires turned to the curb whenever you park it. If your car wheels are in that position, thieves are less likely to be able to move around with the vehicle. They'll see that your car requires more time and energy to be moved, so it'll become less of a target. Sadly, scams on the road are quite common, and one of the most widespread types is the infamous tow truck scam. This scam involves leaving oil, metal nails, or glass shards on the road and waiting for drivers to fall into the trap. If your car gets damaged in such a situation, the scammers will suddenly appear out of nowhere and offer to provide towing service at extremely high prices. They'll try to pressure you into using their services because most of the time, they place these traps in strategic locations. They make sure people get stranded where there's low visibility and no gas station in sight where you can assess the damage done to your car. In a situation where you have no other option but to give consent for them to tow your car, They'll also take advantage of the situation and take it to workshops unapproved by your insurance company. This means you'll have to pay even more money to get your car back. If you've been a driver for long enough, 
you know that the driver who rear-ends another vehicle is always at fault. That's because you should always keep a comfortable distance from the car in front of you, so you can safely stop the car in case of an emergency. Some scammers will take advantage of this by repeatedly braking suddenly, causing you to hit them. This dangerous tactic is used to get money for supposed damages and even for make-believe medical expenses. To avoid falling victim to this scam, you should reduce your speed and keep a safe distance, especially from suspicious vehicles or chaotic drivers. If a scammer continues to bother you in traffic, the best course of action is to drive to the nearest police station and report them. Picture this, you're driving on the road and suddenly a motorcyclist gets your attention and points out that your wheels are smoking. You quickly pull over to the side of the road. The motorcyclist then offers to help by calling a mechanic to check your wheels. Surprisingly, the mechanic gets there really fast but proceeds to disable your braking system while inspecting the cause of the smoke. He then asks you to test your brakes, which of course won't be working since he's already disabled them. Pretending to be helpful, he offers to fix your brakes for you, but will charge an enormous price for it. Moral of the story, stick to your trusted mechanic or towing company. You never know who you'll find on the road. Some scams aren't even that. They're just urban legends. Many people claim to have seen the wrong way man on the roads. One version of this story mentions a man stuck driving down one-way streets in the opposite direction, causing chaos and confusion as other drivers try to avoid him. The man is said to be crazed and dangerous, with a wild look in his eyes and a penchant for reckless driving. Other stories say he's not even driving but that once you've seen this mysterious person on the side of the road while driving home, you should turn around to keep from going back to your house for at least a week. That is, if you don't want anything bad to happen. There are countless stories of near misses and close calls with this mysterious figure. Some even say that they've been hit by the man and that they suffered serious injuries as a result. Despite the many sightings and stories, there's no concrete evidence to suggest that the wrong way man actually exists. Many experts believe that the legend is simply a cautionary tale, meant to remind people to be aware of their surroundings and to drive safely. However, the legend persists and continues to be passed down through generations, making it one of the most enduring urban myths of all time. All right, Freddy Krueger lovers, this story is for you. Imagine the scene. You go to bed after a long, busy day, but in the middle of the night, your peaceful dream gets interrupted by an unexpected guest, and he looks like this. You've never seen this strange face before. He says something nice to you, or maybe he begins to threaten and even chase you all over the place. Also, he might just stare at you in silence with a mysterious Mona Lisa smile. You wake up the next morning. Whew, thank goodness it was just a dream. You scroll down your feed and suddenly, the very same face is looking back at you from the screen. Is that even possible? Well, yes and no. This man is an urban legend that has haunted many people's dreams in recent decades. According to the story, he first started appearing in dreams in the 1980s and the first sketch of his face was created in a New York mental clinic in the winter of 2006. One patient of a well-known psychiatrist drew a portrait that eventually went viral. According to her, this man has been repeatedly appearing in her dreams, although she's never seen him in the waking world. And unlike Freddy, he acted pretty friendly and even offered her some advice on her private life. Soon after that, another patient noticed the portrait on the doctor's desk. He recognized that face and claimed to be dreaming of him regularly too. The second patient has never seen this man beyond the dream world either. The psychiatrist found this case curious and showed the portrait to some of his colleagues. Multiple patients also recognized this face and said they'd been seeing this man frequently in their own dreams. And from that time until today, Thousands of alleged witnesses all over the globe reported the very same story in plenty of variations. 
A website creator from Italy, Andrea Natella, told the media that he first dreamt of this man in the winter of 2008. In his dream, he received a very specific message from this man who told him to create a website dedicated to solving the mystery of his appearance. According to Natella, he decided to follow this instruction and made an online platform aimed at collecting stories shared by dreamers all over the world. The website gained a lot of attention and soon became a viral sensation. Some people posted funny and cute stories. For example, this man appeared in a dream as a father figure, giving wise fortune cookie advice. Or as a romantic partner with gifts and flowers, taking the dreamer on a fancy date. One of the witnesses claimed to have dreamt about this man being a school teacher from Brazil with six fingers on his right hand. But others reported experiencing some creepy nightmares that made them wake up shaking and sweating. There's little information about the voice of this mysterious guy, perhaps because it's typically harder for the human brain to remember sounds from dreams compared to pictures. However, there are some common trends in this man's message, such as telling dreamers to go north. Of course, thousands of people tried to find an actual living human that looks exactly like this man. They sent Natella many letters with different guesses, from ordinary people from the block to celebrities. Some suggested movie characters like The Man from Another Place from Twin Peaks. English composer Andrew Lloyd Webber also joined the list and even an Indian guru named Arud Kanan Aya. But despite the variety of wild guesses and funny memes, the original This Man was never found. Over the years, many brave minds tried to crack this mystery, which was getting more and more viral, and multiple theories popped up. Let's take a look at some of them. Remember the iconic dream surfer played by Leonardo DiCaprio? Well, the first theory is kind of similar to the famous movie plot. It suggests that this man is a real person who can enter people's dreams using some secret psychological skills. Unfortunately, this theory has the lowest scientific credibility, which isn't surprising. Unmasking is the last thing that dream surfers need, right? While some believed that this man is a superhero who shows his actual life face, others thought he looked completely different in the waking world. Meanwhile, more pessimistic individuals suspected a global brainwashing experiment going on behind those innocent, fluffy eyebrows. But since the dream space is one of the most poorly explored territories, it's pretty hard to get solid evidence to support any of these ideas. Another popular explanation is based on Carl Jung's psychoanalytical theory. It suggests that this man is an archetypal image from the collective unconscious. It visits the dreamer to point at particularly sensitive subjects and helps release psychic power to cope with hard times. Some take mysticism to the next level and associate this man with the universal consciousness. Those who adhere to this theory believe that their creator takes this specific form to communicate through their dreams. That's why the orders they receive from him must be followed undoubtedly. Pretty scary, huh? Science offers a simpler explanation, though. This theory is a mix of psychology and sociology. It claims that the whole this man phenomenon has arisen and developed thanks to imitation. People who come across the picture and his story get deeply impressed. And after that, they just begin seeing him in their dreams. In simple words, he only haunts those who make him a thing. And there's another curious explanation which is based on humans' tendency to forget faces from their dreams. Let's say you're dreaming of your favorite actor. Then he turns into your uncle. And then he smoothly takes the form of your yoga teacher, who you only met once 10 years ago. This character tells you something important or just leaves some specific emotional impression. You wake up in the morning still feeling this aftertaste but you have no clue who exactly you were dreaming of. That's when the daytime recognition theory steps in. It claims that the brain uses this man's face to fill the void when the person is trying to remember the dream in a waking state. It chooses this particular face just because the dreamer remembers it more vividly. Okay, but this explanation only works for those who dreamt of this man after seeing his portrait. But what about those who didn't? 
Can the human brain actually create any new faces in dreams? According to science, the answer is no. Every individual you dream of has been someone you have either known or merely came across. Of course, you may dream of someone you barely recognize because you've seen them only once, but the brain remembers everything. It keeps a library of all the hundreds of thousands of faces that you see every day. So, according to science, this man is either your old friend or a system bug. As creepy as it sounds. Are you scared yet? Take it easy. In 2010, the website creator Andrea Natelli made a post where he confessed that the story of this man was just a prank. Nutella never verified whether this prank had a commercial purpose, but still, he managed to gain attention in Hollywood. A production company named Ghost House Pictures purchased this man's website domain, and in 2010, they announced plans to make a horror movie based on this epic viral trend. Their press release promised a story about a common man who discovers that people he has never met are seeing him in their dreams. And now he's on a mission to find out why he's the source of nightmares happening all over the globe. However, no further statements about the movie have ever since been made. Is it because of business calculations or this man's curse? I guess we'll never know. Prank or not, people to this day keep on sharing fresh stories about this man visiting them in their dreams. There are more urban legends about haunted dreams than you don't want to Google before bedtime. But for now, have a good night, my curious friends.